All right. Of course, uh, stoichiometry isn't always just going to be mass to mass or liquid to liquid or gas to gas. Sometimes it'll be a combination of any one of those. But the procedure for doing um, uh, any kind of stoichiometry, stoichiometry is always the same. Determine a chemical reaction, determine what is given, what is asked, and uh, then follow the steps. Determine the steps and follow them. So sometimes I might start here and want to go end up there. So there's going to be one step to get to moles, one step to do mole ratio, and a third step uh, to get me to a gas. Or sometimes I might start here and I want to end up there. Again, you can see that it's, as long as you follow the steps, um, first convert to moles, use mole ratio, then use those moles to determine the, the um, requested information. As long as you follow the steps, you should be okay. Here's a couple of examples. You may want to pause the recording and just try these on your own and see if you can go through all of those steps. Um, and then press play and, and, uh, and see how you do. Okay, so example number one, 10 grams methane, react with oxygen gas. Typically, I wouldn't give you the equation, but just for uh, time's sake and to make it neat, I thought I'd put the equation in. But you should be able to write the equation for all of these. Methane reacts with oxygen. Its combustion produces carbon dioxide and water. To balance this thing, I would probably, let's see, I need four hydrogens, so I'd put a two there. And that gives me four oxygens, so I need a two here. Now I've got four. One carbon, one carbon. Okay, I'm balanced. So I have 10 grams of methane, so I have a mass of 10.0 grams. Reacts with oxygen gas. What volume of carbon dioxide gas is produced? So here, volume of carbon dioxide produced, I don't know. If both reactants and products are STP. Well, STP wouldn't have any effect on a, on a weight or a mass of something. So I don't need to put it there, but I do need to include my temperature and my pressure here. And STP, if I recall correctly, get out my notes, um, the temperature is 0 Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin, and the pressure is 101.325 kilopascals. Okay. So I've written my equation. I've determined, oh, I need to determine a given and an asked. Wherever there's a question mark, that is always going to be my asked side. So that must mean that this one that I'm given some information about is the given side. Notice I know quite a bit of information here, but there is one piece that I don't know. That's what makes it the asked side. And over here, sometimes I'm given, like in the case of gases, and I have to be given at least two things. But in, in the case of mass, all I need is one thing in order to get moles. Okay, so equation given, asked, determine steps. Okay, steps. So I'm starting in mass or solidsville. That's right there. That's a solid. And I'm wanting to find out information about a gas. So that's down here. Three steps. Convert to moles. Use mole ratio to get across the river. Notice the mole-eating sharks there, or the gram-eating sharks. And then my last step will be to get from moles of this, of asked, to some information about a gas. Three steps. So the first step, I want to go from a solid to moles. So I'm going to take the mass of CH4, and I'm going to convert that to moles of CH4. Notice my first step, always get moles. Okay, there's a formula for that. Moles is equal to mass over molar mass. So the mass is 10.0 grams divided by the molar mass, I've figured it out elsewhere, is 16.05 grams per mole. Grams cancel out. When I do that division, it comes out to 0 0.62. 305, etc., moles. Okay, so that's now moles of methane. So I've succe successfully gone from here to moles right there. Next step, get across the river. So I've got to get moles of my given, 
moles of methane, so moles of methane, and I've got to convert it to moles of my asked, and the asked is the CO2. Okay, now, in my chemical equation, this is a one-to-one -one relationship. If it's one-to-one, -one, the number of moles of methane will equal the moles of CO2, which you could just state if you want. I, myself, I like to just write it down. 0 0.62305 moles, that's moles of methane. So I just like to write it just so I do the same thing every time. So one mole of methane um, reacts to form one mole of carbon dioxide. So the moles of methane cancel. 0 0.62305 times 1 divided by 1, of course, is 0 0.62305 moles. But now these moles are of CO2. So now I've gone across the river. Okay, so I've changed my mass to moles. I've converted my moles of methane to moles of carbon dioxide. Now my last step is to take the moles of CO2 and convert it to whatever they're asking. They're asking for volume. So volume of CO2. Okay, um, if I go to my river chart to go from moles to gas, I can use PV equals NRT. So that's what I'll use in this case here. So PV equals NRT. And to solve for V, is what, which is what I'm looking for, it'll be NRT over P. So the moles, I just found those. This is moles of um, carbon dioxide gas times specific, or the universal gas constant, 8.314 liter kilopascals per mole Kelvin times temperature, uh, what was the temperature? Oh, 273.15 Kelvin divided by the pressure, which was 101.325 uh, kilopascals. So, uh, moles cancel, kelvins cancel, kilopascals cancel, and I'm left with liters, I have volume, that's good. Okay, so I multiply all that stuff out, and I come up with, in the end, I believe, 13.9643 liters. Rounding to appropriate sig figs, I think I have three sig figs everywhere, so I should rewrite this as 14.0 liters. Okay, so it's an example of a combined gas stoichiometry, or a combined uh, stoichiometry question. Um, again, it's the same steps as we've done before. You just have to, instead of going from a solid to a solid, you go elsewhere. Let's try one more. Again, if you want to pause at this point and try this question on your own, uh, try that and then press play and uh, see how you do. Okay, let's get at it. Uh, 500 milliliters. I'm going to change that to liters right away. 0 0.500 liters. Of H2SO4 gas at 300K, 100 kilopascal, devolved pure water requires 12, let me change that, 0 0.01250 liters of the NaOH solution to neutralize. What is the concentration of the NaOH solution. Okay, so they're looking for molarity of NaOH. They gave me 0.500 liters of H2SO4, uh, and that's a volume. Um, oh, they also gave me a pressure there, 300 Kelvin, and they gave me, oh no, that's temperature, temperature, and they gave me a pressure of 100 kilopascals. And they gave me a volume over here of 0 0.01250 liters. Okay, now uh, one thing I just wanted to mention here, they gave me a volume of H2SO4, but they said it's a volume of a gas. And that's why, and it's interesting because both, vo both gases and solutions have volumes, volumes in them. Uh, but don't, uh, you have to look at the other information that's there to tell you whether it's actually the volume of a gas 
or whether it's a volume of a solution. In this case, since they say it's of a gas, then I'm going to also require a temperature and a pressure in order to get moles from that. So just from the question, you should be able to determine uh, when they say volume, or looking for a volume, or giving you a volume, you should be able to determine whether it's a volume of a gas or the volume of a solution. Okay, here's my question mark right there. That's what I'm looking for. So this is what I'm asked. And this side is be what I'm given. Okay, so um, I've got a chemical equation. Oh, I don't know if it's balanced. <laughs> Maybe I should balance that. Uh, let's do that. So uh, uh, Na2, there's two Na's there, so I need a 2 there. Um, H2SO4, there's an SO4, SO4. Uh, okay, two hydrogens. Oh no, there's another two hydrogens. So it's four hydrogens all together, so I need a 2 here. But that gives me two oxygens, and here I have two oxygens, so I'm good. Notice I didn't include that oxygen because it's part of a sulfate, which I see on both sides. Okay, I'm balanced. Balanced chemical equation, I've determined given and asked, now I'll figure out my steps. It looks like I'm in a gas situation here, so it looks like I'm starting with a gas. And I'm ending molarity they're wanting or concentration looks like I'm ending in a solution so it looks like I'm ending right there so my first step will be to take this gas information and get moles out of it my next step will be to take the moles and get across the river with a mole ratio to moles of what's asked and my last step will be to take the moles that I've uh, got of asked and convert it into some kind of solution information a three-stepper I love those okay so let's start with um, uh, what I'm given here so I've got gas information so I want to take all this gas information this volume temperature and pressure and I want to convert it to moles of H2SO4 okay so I think there's a formula for that right there moles is PV equals NRT Okay, let me get some space. Moles equals PV over RT equals the pressure was 100 kilopascals. The volume was 0 0.500 liters divided by universal gas constant 8.314 liter kilopascals per, notice I'm putting it on the other side of the line, Kelvin mole times on the bottom the temperature which was 300 Kelvin okay so uh, kilopascals go liters go Kelvins go I'm left with moles that's what I want okay so when I multiply all that stuff out 100 times 0.5 divided by that equals a 0 0.0200 Four, six, five, etc. moles, and this is moles of my given side, which is H2SO4. Okay, beautiful. I've done step one. So now let's do step number two, which will be to take moles of my given and convert it to moles of the asked. So moles given is H2SO4, and I'm converting that to moles of what I'm asked, which is NaOH. Okay, so to do that, always mole ratio. So I write down what I'm given, 0 0.02465 moles of H2SO4. Multiply it by a ratio where I have to have the moles of H2SO4 on the bottom and the moles of what's asked. I think that's NaOH on the top. Let's look at the mole ratio. So one mole of H2SO4 reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. So one mole of H2SO4, two moles of that. So I'm going to just take, I guess, and multiply my number by two, divided by one, comes out to 0 0.400, oh, no, 0 0.0400, etc., moles.
Again, I'm keeping those numbers in my calculator. I'm just writing down uh, just a portion of it here. Okay, so I've gotten across the river. I have now moles. This is moles of NaOH. So my last step, the red step, will be to convert from moles of what's asked to molarity or volume, or we're going to Solutionsville. So I want to go from moles of NaOH. And let's just see what they asked at the top here. They were asking for molarity. So I have moles of NaOH. I want to figure out the molarity of NaOH. Okay, and there should be a formula for that right there. Molarity is equal to moles over volume. Okay, so uh, molarity is equal to moles over volume. Moles, I just figured out my 0 0.0400 etc moles divided by oh what was the volume hopefully they gave me that uh, right here the volume of any OH, uh 1250 so 0 0.01250 liters of any OH. so if I divide those two I c should come up with something like 3.207 4, 4, etc., moles per liter. Of course, we need to do the sig fig thing, as with all calculations in chem. Uh, here, I guess technically, if I don't have a decimal there, that's only one sig fig, but we're going to assume that that's three sig figs. Uh, um, temperature, we'll assume that's three sig figs. Vo the um, pressure, three, and here I've got four. So 3 is my weakest link, so I need 3 sig figs. So 3.21 moles per liter, or another way of writing that is molar. Okay, so that gives you just a couple of examples of any kind of stoichiometry that you can uh, be given. Again, I emphasize, get yourself a balanced chemical equation. Once you have that, determine what is given and what is asked. And it's useful to write that information right underneath the chemical equation. Determine how many steps you're going to have to uh, uh, perform and then complete those steps. Hopefully these series of, of scribblecasts will help you in completing any stoichiometric question.